Hello, I'm John Shepherd, and in this short video we're going to take a look at what's known as leg stiffness and why it's so important to developing increased speed and jump ability. Just to make it clear, we're not talking here about a lack of flexibility but rather the ability of the leg muscles and in particular the muscles that surround the ankle, knee and hip to generate force and return force very quickly with little bending and compliance at the joints. In terms of a definition, here's some sports science. Human running can be modelled as either a spring mass model or multiple springs in series. A force is required to stretch or compress the spring and thus the stiffness can be calculated from the ratio of this force to the change in the spring length. It turns out that hopping is one of the best predictors of leg stiffness and therefore one of the best developers. Let's take a look at drop jumps specifically in regard to developing leg stiffness. Now I've covered drop jumps in other videos that I produced so for the moment I'll gloss over this and just indicate that a drop jump requires a quick reaction on the ground contact after dropping down from a raised platform or jumping forwards off of such a platform. Some may argue that the latter aren't specifically drop jumps however for the sake of this video, I'll include them in this range of exercises, for expediency's sake. And also because I see them as key to developing leg stiffness, which is backed up by plenty of research. Much sports science research indicates that greater leg stiffness, as developed through drop jumps, improves a maximal velocity, but less so acceleration, of which I'll say more in another video. I've also found that improving leg stiffness also improves the ability to jump and take off at speed, which is obviously crucial for the long jump and the triple jump. With greater leg stiffness, the athlete will be able to exert more force and return more force on the takeoff, for example. And, crucially, they're going to be able to do this more quickly, so that's why you can see the definite benefit when it comes to sprinting. Continuing the theme that drop jumping in particular is very beneficial for top end speed, I discovered some research that looked specifically at this method of training and its effects on rugby players. 20 professional male rugby players were in the study and they were tested for acceleration, top end speed and strength using a squat, reactive strength, counter movement jump, drop jump and leg spring stiffness. In keeping with the other findings, of the research that I've mentioned so far, it was discovered that leg spring stiffness and crucially drop jump performance were related to the flying 10 meter time. So again, it's the plyometrics and the drop jump that's of most benefit to top end speed. Now, of course, bounding and other types of plyometrics are also beneficial for developing leg stiffness. However, it just seems that drop jumping is one of the key or perhaps the most significant plyometric exercise that can be used to develop specific leg stiffness. Just for some context, it's important to note that plyometrics and drop jumps have been used by athletes for many, many years. I found this video online of some old Soviet training from probably the 1980s, and you can see an array of drop jump exercises being performed. For further reference, I'll add that the Soviets discovered that a drop height of 60 centimetres was the ideal one for developing both speed and strength when it came to single contact drop jumps. You may have noticed in some of the stills from the video some jumps being performed from a very high height. This is something that I wouldn't recommend. However, as with all training, the more times you do it, the more you'll get a specific transferability and you will be able to handle greater landing forces and greater heights. Always emphasize the speed of reaction to the contact rather than going for a slower reaction and try to minimize that knee bend. So I'd recommend that you include drop jumps and other forms of plyometrics regularly into your jumps and sprint training. You'll know that these methods will develop increased speed and reactivity and jump power. In order to develop greater acceleration for the sprints, you need to do a slightly different type of training. And as I've said, I'll talk about that more in another video. As usual, 
Thanks for watching and good luck with your training and competitions and do leave any comments you may have in the section below or through my other social media. And of course do subscribe to the channel and check out the merchandise that are now producing under the banner of Jump Squad. So if you like to see some of the t-shirts and other products available do check out what's known as the merch shelf on the homepage of my channel.